Today I'm going to show you guys how to create a countdown timer for summer break. So we only have about 86 days left. Okay, so if you have your HTML created website ready to go, you can start a new one or use an old one, but I'm going to go ahead and start a new one. Um, you can do HTML tab, automatically populate your skeleton for what you need, and I'm going to call it the countdown to summer. Okay, and then in the body, it's pretty simple. We're not gonna have too much. Um, we'll have an H1 tag, and we're gonna need to have a specific ID for this because we're gonna reference it in our JavaScript. So we need to name it something, and so we're gonna name it our timer. And then I'm gonna create another line that's an H1. Um, and I'm gonna say until summer break okay and I have not created a CSS folder for this or I've created a folder but I've not created a, f a file for it so I'm gonna create a new CSS style style.css it's a new CSS file right there and I'll go into my CSS and I can have my body, background, color, gray, and I could have my H1 background color, um, white. Then if I put something in here, zero seconds I could test oops I need a link in my title my CSS CSS slash style dot CSS and then we can go to our timer and this much time until summer break okay um, and then we can go into our JavaScript and the first thing we're going to do is create a variable that will be our um, end time so our end time is going to be uh, of the type new date and so HTML JavaScript allows you to utilize the class date as well as a lot of programming languages um, that will if you type in a date comma 2020 at 14 because it's military time 47 zero zero then dot get time then you create a variable x that equals and this will be basically your loop function that will count down the timer okay so in this outside of the curly brackets we're gonna end it with have it update every second so put a thousand parentheses semicolon okay then we'll create a variable of current time and that will equal simply new date dot get time because that'll get the current time because we didn't put anything in there it knows to get the live time and this time is in milliseconds from a specific date and so if you get variable time left it will be the end time minus the current time
Now, if we did document dot get element by ID timer dot enter HTML equals time left. Let's see what that does. Well, make sure you save and make sure that at the end of your HTML, add in script js slash timer dot js and src instead of type. And I'll come back to this. You'll see that this is based off of milliseconds. So that's how many milliseconds are left in the in the school year. Okay. Um, like some of these aren't, I mean, this is going down a thousand milliseconds at a time <clears throat> um, because that's counting down seconds. But that's not what we want. So now we need to convert. And instead of time left, we're going to put something else. So first, we need to convert time left into days. And in order to do that, we need to, we're going to do math.floor. We're going to round down of time left divided by, essentially we're going to divide by milliseconds, seconds, minutes. So all we have left is, well, and divide by hours. So all we have left is days. But we can multiply those together by doing 1,000 times 60 times 60 times 24. Okay. Now, in order to get hours, we're going to do math.floor time left and we're going to get the remainder after our days equation is converted. Okay, so actually we're not going to put days in there, but we're going to put the same equation to whittle it down to days. So time left, modulo, and then have all of this in parentheses. And you're going to find the remainder. Okay, and we're going to actually add another parentheses at the beginning here. And that is because we want math.floor to do encompass the entire equation. So we have one extra open parentheses right now. We're going to still outside of both of those divide by where here we divided by a, a thousand times 60 times 60 times 24 to get days. We only need it divide by a thousand times 60 times 60. Add that finishing parentheses so it, the math dot floor encompasses all of the equation. Okay, and that's the hardest or the longest one we have to do. Because then we have variable for minutes math dot floor And two parentheses, time left, percent, and we just need to do one less than the last one, a thousand times sixty times sixty. Because this is getting away, this is taking away 
the hours. It's finding the remainder of minutes after all the hours are taken away. This is finding the remaining hours after all the days are taken, taken away. And then we're going to divide by 1,000 times 60. And then var seconds equals math.floor. Time left modulus 1,000 times 60. So it's finding the remainder after, because the 1,000 is from milliseconds to seconds, 60 is from seconds to minutes. So this is finding the remainder after you divide by the minutes. So that's our next step. Then after you find the remainder, you're going to divide by 1,000 uh, to kind of round down the rest of the milliseconds. That's what that last dividing by 1,000 does. Semicolon. Okay, now instead of time left, we're going to switch to days plus days. And then I'm going to put a line just so we have some space there. Plus minutes. And I'm going to start a new line. Plus. minutes oh I forgot hours whoops need that plus hours And then don't forget the quote, hours, plus minutes, minutes, plus seconds, seconds, end quote. Ah, make sure you spell all your variables correctly. Days. Eighty-six days, four hours, fifty-two minutes, and thirteen seconds. <laughs> 